Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on heterostatic chemistry and physics. Now, if you're one of the many students who have just received underwhelming trial exam results for either chemistry and or physics, and you feel disappointed by these results because you feel you could have done way better and you're unsure or don't know what to do from here, this video is exactly made for you. So watch the entire video and by the end of this video, you will know exactly what you should be doing from now until your HEC exam in order to excel in the exam and achieve the results that you want. Before I go through the strategies that you should employ leading up to the HEC exam, I want to preface this video by saying and reminding everyone that so far you guys have only gone through 50% of the entire HEC journey. While it might not feel like it, since you've done multiple assessments for each subject and you only have one more exam left, all of your school assessment marks will only account for half of your overall HEC mark. This means your performance in the HEC exam will have a very, very significant impact on your overall mark. So in general, I want you to use your past assessments as learning opportunities. Learn from your mistakes and find out what you can do between now and the final exam to fix these mistakes and be able to perform better in an exam that's worth a lot more stake than the ones you've done so far. So most importantly, tell yourself that you can still do well. In my personal experience from mentoring many, many students in the past few years, a lot of students are very surprised when they score a much higher exam mark compared to the school assessment mark. And that shouldn't be surprising because most people, they improve throughout the year so the knowledge and understanding of chemistry and physics will usually accumulate. So by the end of the exam, when they sit the final HEC exam, their knowledge and understanding should be much, much better compared to their understandings during early assessments in the year. So the strategies and study methods that you start implementing between now and the final exam will have a massive impact on your final performance. The most important thing that you can do now is to review your exam papers. What this means is you go through your past school assessments, whether this is your trial exams or the ones before that, identify and categorize all of your mistakes in these exam papers. For each mistake, try to classify them into one of the following main categories. Is it a mistake due to a lack of knowledge? Is this mistake a more theoretical one? or is it more related to calculations in chemistry and physics? And very commonly, is this mistake due to a silly mistake rather than an understanding issue? By reviewing your exam papers, you should be able to identify clear areas of your strength and weaknesses, which you'll be focusing on leading up to the final exam. Now, in my experience, I find that a lot of students don't actually know how to review the exam papers properly and categorize their mistakes. So when you're going through each question that you've gotten wrong, I want you to ask yourself the following questions. I lost marks in this question because, is it because that I didn't cover the topic properly during the preparation stages leading up to the exam? So this is usually related to a knowledge issue where you simply had forgotten about this particular topic. Is it because I didn't write down everything that was expected in the marking criteria, despite knowing what the question is asking for. I lost marks because it was a genuinely a difficult question for which I knew the topic and the content for it, but I just didn't know how to attempt the question. This is very different to the first two reasons because you may know the topic well, but you weren't able to identify that the question was in fact asking for that topic during the exam. Was it because it was a calculation error? And most of the time, students make these errors due to silly mistakes under a time and exam condition. Or was it because you simply read the question wrong? And again, this is a very, very common mistake that students make during assessments. And sometimes you may have lost a mark because you missed a question, especially in trial exams when there are so many questions in the exam paper, especially when you're rushing through under time condition it is not uncommon for students to miss questions and lose marks as a result of it. And this can sometimes make up a very substantial portion of the marks you've lost in assessments. Now, speaking of time, a lot of students struggle with time management in exams. So you may have lost marks in a question because you simply ran out of time. If you were given more time in the exam, 
maybe you could have scored higher on that given question. So when you're going through each question in your past assessments, I want you to ask yourself these questions in order to help you categorize what was the specific reason or reasons that you lost marks in these questions. By categorizing these questions and mistakes into these areas, you'll be able to develop a very personalized and strategic study plan. This study plan will be tailored towards your areas of weakness based on the reasons why you lost a particular mark in the exam. So broadly speaking, you can categorize your mistakes and areas of weakness into a content slash knowledge issue, whether it's because you only gained partial marks for a particular question, is it because you simply didn't know how to do the question because it was very difficult and very unfamiliar? Was it due to silly mistakes? And as we discussed, was it due to exam time management, which is a very common issue that students have. Now, for the remaining part of this video, I'll go through each of these areas of weakness and some of the strategies that I think will be very useful for you to employ in order to tackle each of these issues. The first area of weakness I want to talk about is knowledge and content, specifically referring to the lack of knowledge or incomplete knowledge across the modules that was examined in your past assessments. This includes any small knowledge gaps you may have had and you weren't aware of, or simply because you didn't have enough time to prepare for the exam leading up to it. The main strategy to tackle this issue is revision, revision, revision. However, you do not need to revise everything across the whole curriculum for chemistry and physics. You need to revise specific topics that you identified by reviewing your exam papers. This will save you lots of time and also save time for the other strategies that you may want to implement later on. I must emphasize, if this issue applies to you, you should start your revision now. Do not wait until it's right before the exam because that will be way too late. You want to use that time right before the exam to do other things rather than simple revision. The most effective way of revision is not reading through your notes or retyping or rewriting them. That is a very common mistake that students have because even though it allows you to remember the content better, it doesn't necessarily help you prepare for the HEC exam. So what I recommend is once you've written down the notes for all your topics, you should practice more school trial exam papers. Through doing more and more exam questions from these papers, not only can you consolidate the topics that you may have revised to double check whether you've revised the topic properly, but you can also use this avenue to identify further gaps in your knowledge and understanding to ensure that your notes covers the curriculum in a comprehensive way. As you're practicing more and more school trial papers, you will definitely come across new information that you have not learned before. When you come across these new information, it is very important for you to add them, not just to your memory, but also add them to your notes so that as you progressively do more and more exam papers, you're refining your notes, you're making them more comprehensive and more complex. Now, for many school trial exams, you may not have been examined on all the topics or all the inquiry questions in chemistry and physics syllabus. So you should also spend some time making notes for the content that was not examined and then reconsolidating your understanding through doing trial exam paper questions that are targeted at these particular topics. The second issue that students often experience is gaining partial marks on questions, especially in the trial exam. Now, gaining partial marks or losing partial marks on one question won't significantly affect your school trial performance. However, what's more common is that students often lose partial marks across multiple questions, which then accumulate to add up to a more substantial effect on your performance in the school trial exam. If this issue applies to you, here are a few strategies that you can implement to make sure that you can gain full marks in HEC exam questions. The first thing is you need to ask yourself, do you truly understand the different exam verbs that are prescribed in the HEC chemistry and physics syllabus? 
So this includes things like describe, explain, analyze, discuss. I go through the different exam verbs in their own video, so make sure you check that out. When you're reviewing your ex past exam papers, hopefully you've been provided with sample answers, if not the marking criteria. So then you can compare your own answers to the sample answer which will score full marks. By doing so, it should become clear to you the components that was actually missing in your response, which resulted in the loss of partial marks. If this is not very clear to you, you should go to your teacher and clarify why marks were taken off for that particular question. Now, I want to also highlight that learning from sample answers should not only apply to your past school assessments. When you're practicing school trial papers, you should also compare your long answer written response questions to the sample answers. Most of the time, this can be a bit ambiguous and difficult to determine whether your answer will score full marks. This is where it's very useful and beneficial for you to bring these answers to your teachers or perhaps your friends at school or even tutors for them to give you feedback. Their experience will benefit you as they will be able to tell you what you've done well in your answer and what you're still missing in order to gain the full marks of that question. So actively seek feedback. Just because you know what to write for a written response question for chemistry and physics doesn't necessarily mean you will score full marks for that question if it comes up in the HEC exam. So bring your responses to your teachers, to friends who have performed better or are more knowledgeable in a certain area, and to your tutors. Ask them what you can improve on for your exam responses. And as I emphasized in the previous area of weakness regarding knowledge and content, when you're learning new things from sample answers and through discussions with other people, you should also add this new information to your notes. See your notes as your knowledge bank. So every time you learn something new, make sure you're refining your notes and you're expanding it, making it more comprehensive. Now, moving on to the next area of weakness, which is the inability to attempt difficult questions or questions that you have never seen before or are unfamiliar with. This is particularly relevant in trial exams and the HEC exam because you will definitely come across questions in the HEC exam which you've never seen before. Most students tend to feel very frustrated when it comes to this area of weakness because in hindsight, when they look at the sample answers or solution to a difficult question, they know exactly what the content is and they know it well because they've covered it during the exam preparation. But during the exam conditions and due to the fact that they have not seen the question before, they were not able to actually score highly on that given question. So if this applies to you, here are some strategies that you can employ to make these difficult questions easier for you in the future. In most cases, students often find questions difficult because they actually do not truly understand the topic that the question was examining. So for these questions that you've identified in your past assessments and your practice papers, you should ask yourself, do you really understand this topic or have you only just memorized it or wrote learnt it? A good way to verify whether you've truly understood it is to try explaining the topic to a friend or having a discussion of the topic with the teachers or tutors. That way, they can ask you questions as a way to check whether you truly understood the topic. HEC exam papers are very different to most school trial assessments. School trial papers aim to test whether students have adequately revised and covered all areas of the curriculum. On the flip side, HEC exam papers is testing the application and the understanding of these areas rather than the student's ability to regurgitate or to retrieve knowledge. So during your preparation, it is very important for you to practice these HEC exam papers. In these exam papers, you'll come across these difficult questions. When you're going through these difficult and unfamiliar questions, I want you to also focus on the interpretation aspect of the question. Try to identify what is the topic or topics that are related to this question. What is it actually examining? And 
I think more importantly for these difficult and unfamiliar questions, you need to also ask yourself, how do you know how to start this question if you were to encounter it in the HSC exam? In my experience, a lot of students make the innocent mistake of reading the solutions of this difficult question afterwards and then telling themselves, oh yes, I would have done that if I were to encounter this question in the exam. Because as they read through it, the solution makes perfect sense because they've covered it, they've revised it during the revision process of exam preparation. But then what they're really missing is, do they really know how to make that connection to the topic? when they are reading the question in the exam. So you really got to consciously ask yourself, do you know how to start the question, how to begin the question, and make that connection between the question and the relevant topics if you read it for the first time in the exam condition? If the answer is no, then you need to seek help from your peers, teachers, and tutors, and ask them what parts of the question gives them the prompt or gives them the hint that it's asking about a particular topic. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.